Hello everybody, welcome back to Fanblade. Thank you to all of my regular viewers who uh, left some amazing comments on the uh, uh, on the previous video. Uh, I'd list you all by name, but there's too many. <laughs> I, se I seem to have touched a, a nerve in a good way. Uh, people are really excited about this, so that you know, sort of makes me more excited. Thank you. Here's the neck. It is currently a square block. Uh, everything on it needs to be rounded a bit, because, you know, it's very sharp. I need to make a radius sanding block, and a long, long time ago I made a video about making a radius sanding block cutting jig. Well, right now is the first time I'm going to use it since I, <laughs> since I made that video way back when. Uh, so let's get to it, because I'm going to need that very shortly. There it is, one radius sanding block. It's come out a, just a tiny little bit uneven. There's one block there that's sitting proud of the rest, and this one at the end has, has shifted. Uh, but that's okay, I can uh, give this a little bit of a sand on the inside just to even it out, and by the time we get some sandpaper double-sided taped to that, should be smooth as anything. Or, well, as smooth as 40 grit sandpaper anyway. It'll be the right shape. Uh, speaking of shapes, it's a heck of a shape to try and sand out. Uh, of this. So I'm actually not going to sand the entire thing. Uh, I've just done some maintenance on my Stanley 220 block plane. This thing's ready to go. So uh, I'll be uh, clamping the neck in the vise and uh, planing down, checking as I go with this spare bit just to make sure that I'm getting close. And when I am getting close, then of course uh, switch over to this. So to the sawdust area, let's make a mess. Alright, that was a hard fought battle, but I got there. We have a nice, uh, nice even 4 inch radius on the neck. <sighs> it's a lot of sawdust. <laughs> it's a lot of hard work, but you know, I'm, I'm losing weight, so that's a good thing. Here is the headstock. I'm going to punch through with a force in a bit. I was going to punch a hole and then cut it out with a scroll saw, but uh, scroll saws are notoriously wavy, and if you don't have complete control over uh, your workpiece, then it's very easy to make a mistake, uh, especially if you're grab having to stabilize the workpiece from a long way away. <laughs> uh, it's very easy to get it wrong. Uh, so I'm just going to use a force in a bit, 
uh, to uh, punch through there and then just sort of probably just rasp out the rest carve it out sand it up should be good um, and then we can carve the neck yeah this is going to be interesting because the back of the neck to the top of the head uh, top of the fingerboard sorry I want it to be 38 millimeters it's currently sitting at about 45 got to start really by just taking a slice off the back of the neck and that's going to require actually measuring up uh, the end of the neck so I know exactly where I'm carving to but that's you know a fairly run-of-the-mill kind of a thing that you've got to do when you're carving a neck so uh, it's the only thing about this that is run-of-the-mill <laughs> everything else seems weird to me yeah, a four inch radius who does that <laughs> A fully carved electric upright base neck. It is a massive chungus of a thing. It just feels huge. <laughs> I suppose double base necks are, you know, fairly meaty, and that is what that is what this is, more or less. Um, so there it is. Uh, next, I've got to stick it on the body. So cutting a cavity standard rules apply I'm still refining my process uh, I think what I'm going to do is actually uh, cut a little wedge probably about the same size as that triangle there to prop up the back of that and then uh, once I've sort of marked out roughly where that's going and probably cut a nice clean edge around it I'm going to use the Forstner bit just to make a nice perfectly level flat pocket on that weird angle. Chisels, drill press, probably a little bit of sandpaper at the end just to sort of finesse the thing and get a really tight fit. Uh, I think that's probably going to be the, uh, the easiest and quickest way of getting this right.
Nick Pocket is done. I doubt I'm going to win any awards from Nick Pocket Aficionado magazine. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. The uh, Force Nibbit was a complete experiment. Uh, I don't really love it. It was a nice way of getting a nice flat surface on the angle that I wanted, but of course it's left all the pitting from the uh, the centre of the force in a bit, and yeah, it just doesn't look all that good. Probably doesn't matter. Eh, it's, it's making me edgy. Anyway, I have drilled the neck holes. Um, on the last series of videos, somebody asked me a question, because I hadn't made it specifically clear in the edit, uh, that I had in fact drilled some pilot holes in the neck. So I thought I'd give you a decent explanation as to what I'm doing. The uh, principle of bolting a neck on is a fairly simple one. What you want is a, a, a slip fit through the body so that the threads are engaging in the neck and they are pulling the neck hard into the body. Um, when you have a situation where the threads are engaging in both the body and the neck, what you can get, sometimes you can get a little separation there, and no matter how many, and no matter how hard you tighten that screw, they will never pull together because they're locked on the threads, uh, and that is that's that can be fatal. That can absolutely like you just don't want that. Um, so slip fit through the body, uh, engage with the neck, works every time. Uh, I have got some strings, yes, I've been and bought some strings. Um, these are maybe not the best ones you can buy, but then again, this isn't really the best instrument you can you, could, you would ever have. As an experiment, these will be fine. Uh, in fact, I was doing a bit of research about these, and it turns out this company, uh, in 2021, was bought by Diodario. Okay, I'm like I'm guess like I'm speculating that that was lockdown related. Potentially, they had a downturn in their business, and Diodario came along and said, "Nope, we like you. We're going to give you a whole lot of money. Keep on going." So, if Diodario uh, believe in them to that extent, then uh, they're perfectly adequate for what I'm doing. In fact, it actually says on the back of these, "Diodario and Company Incorporated." So, yeah, absolutely no complaints. Uh, so going to put the neck on, I'm going to drill some holes for now, I'm going to worry about fancy things like retaining plates later, uh, it's going to get the strings on it and see what this neck does, because that is the burning question. Is it going to work? Let's find out.
Okay, got a nut and a bridge worked out super rough. Uh, this is all about this, the test of the string tension. Uh, although it is also kind of nice to actually see that it, like it sort, of, sort of looks right. <laughs> um, uh, I am regretting using the smaller tuners. There is so much E string wrapped around that tuner that it's absolutely absurd. Uh, please don't judge me for that. I'm going to put some safety goggles on because <laughs> this bridge is making some creaking noises. I don't know if that's enough lateral strength to not just break along the grain and just collapse. So, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, this is genuinely nerve wracking. Where are my glasses? Right, it's time to tune it. It's, it's at tension. It's actually up to pitch. Al almost. The strings are stretching out a little bit, uh, but that's... Wow. So, what's the neck doing? The neck is absolutely dead straight. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. I'll try and get that on camera. But that neck's got no curve to it at all. It's absolutely dead flat. We have a viable instrument. This is good. This is what we want to see. There's obviously still a heck of a lot of work to do. I've got to work out how I'm amplifying it. Although, hold that thought. <laughs> Okay, the good news is uh, this is going. This is absolutely fine. The neck hasn't moved at all. It has just stayed exactly the shape that I made it when I when I flattened it. It's perfectly flat. The other good news, piezo pickup doesn't sound didn't sound awful. Well, I don't know. Depending on depending on what you think, um, there's certainly ways to improve on this. Obviously, uh, bridge and nut need to be. Uh, sort of sort of remade to not suck because at the moment oh and by the way the back of the neck still sanded to 40 grit this thing's awful to play <laughs> it's a real struggle to play it at the moment but we are getting there I've noticed I just need to take a little bit off this uh, bottom of the peg box here just to give these two outer strings some clearance the other bad news is that uh, it's the end of the video this is going to take some time to take it all apart do all the final sanding and finishing uh, make a new bridge make a new nut actually at the moment every single piece of this thing is made out of quiller that's kind of interesting to me except it is the brownest thing I've ever seen <laughs> I think I might make that out of oak somehow stain the fingerboard a darker colour just to give it some contrast. But that will all be happening in the next video, so in the meantime, thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for your amazing comments, thank you very much for subscribing, and I'll see you for the thrilling conclusion in the not-too-distant future. Cheers!